Hello. Welcome back to Summer Sea. Okay, let's go. Let's just go. Okay, we're back at the Empire of Hands. Okay, let's first get a port report. And then let's go to the Wild Wheel Courts because we have a delivery for the Elegant Central at the Silent Gallery. Oh wait, do I need to go to the Zeppelin directly? Not here? Okay. Turn to the kiosk outside. Hmm. I don't have anything to trade with the Wild Wheel Court this time. Yeah, I didn't bring anything. Ooh, oh well. Okay, let's go directly to the Zeppelin, I guess. In Port Stanton. Okay. The guards allow you to... Mm -hmm. Deliver hydrogen to the Zeppelin. Straight from the Iron Republic. Another proud infernal export. With hydrogen to fuel the zeppelin, the fuel required to power it will go much further. As indeed will the zeppelin once it has been completed. The overseer pays you for your delivery fee. Uh huh. I have 20 and power hands the zeppelin fuel. Oh, one zeppelin, uh, one hydrogen is 20 fuel. Nice. In one. And power hands while wheel status and I gain five drowning pearls as well. Nice. Okay, what else? Okay, these are not worth it. Let's go look for the other uh, adventurer in Heartsick Village. I have some news for you. The lost treasure hunter. Mm -hmm. Adventuring supplies in here, in here, in here. Trade recent news for dynamite. You have a newspaper? At least I won't feel entirely lost when I finally get back home. Mm -hmm. The trade is complete. The lost treasure hunter scans the latest headlines. Fascinating, he mutters, and should be most absorbent if needs must. Now, three sticks of dynamite. Okay. Oh, I. I do need foxfire candles, don't I? Okay, I think I have... I see I have one? I can't see, but I think I have one. Yeah, I have exactly one left. Let's go to the Fountainhead Island. Okay, visit the delightful adventurous camp. Oh, okay, to the vault of the first emperor. Into the vaults. The puzzle sits smugly. The stone columns and their overly generous allocation of disc still await in front of the sealed door. You grudgingly return your attention to the puzzle. Uh, let's blow the door open with dynamite. There's more than one way to show your intelligence. Boom! Bits of rubble and clockwork fly. The stonework trembles slightly as if about to collapse, but then settles with just the occasional plink plink of metal and the tinkle of falling shards and gears of all sizes. Well, that is certainly one solution, declares the delightful adventuress, unplugging her ears. I think though, darling, I shall be taking the rest of those. Cannot fault your thinking but we would rather reach the center of this quaint little tomb without ourselves becoming buried in it, would we not? Still, splendid resourcefulness, splendid top marks. You take all my sticks of dynamite. Give them back. 
I gave that guy a newspaper for it. You're gonna get buried, right? You're gonna need those dynamites and she's not gonna be here. Okay, press on into the vault. What trials await through the technically a doorway over the melted cogs and fallen rubble? A huge maze stretches out before you. The delightful adventurous produces a large ball of yarn. With all due credit to Theseus, she says, nailing one end into the wall. I suspect, however, we shall not have to worry about a minotaur lurking in these particular maze. Come on, such things are hardly a problem for a woman of adventure. This will take but a jiffy. She leads the way with utter confidence, even when it becomes clear she has no idea where she is going. Even when it becomes painfully obvious to all that she is merely turning left at every intersection. Confident that eventually this will lead to the exit. The string runs out long before the maze does, yet somehow this does not feel like an insurmountable problem for returning. Okay. Onwards, this part of the temple looks distinctly more ancient and more carefully crafted by its architects. A sense of respect and history pervades. The Hall of Histories. A mosaic floor stands between you and the door. The delightful adventurous catches your arm before you can step onto it. Oh, sweetie, she sighs, pointing at the walls. Little holes run down both of them, just large enough to see the reddit crossbow bolts behind. Isn't this wonderful, she says. I have seen many, many tombs, and most just put something big and heavy in front of the door. Bless your hearts for putting all this effort into something nobody was ever supposed to see. Anyway, be a dear. I will be outside if you need me. She heads back to check on her camp. What? You want me to go through this? Myself? Ah, oh, when it comes to something dangerous, you just leave it to me, isn't it? Oh my god. Okay, let's, um, I could attempt to read the inscriptions. The language is unrecognizable. Is that a bit of a pictogram? What is it by the cricket stumps? Oh, what? A frozen drop of red honey. What's this? Oh, I could <laughs> experiment, step on the yellow tile, red tile, blue tile, and, uh, and potentially getting killed. Okay, what else can I do? I could examine the mosaic floor. Nine color tiles stretch across this corridor. Be careful, choosing wrong may lead to a wound. Three wounds can mean death. Okay. Let's try this. Attempt to read the inscriptions. 51% chance of success. I succeeded! <sighs> Your skills still fail you. Oh. The monkey tongue follows no apparent rules being a creole of many and diluted with each new scribe. It would take someone capable of writing it to even stand a chance of decrypting it. But the age of the inscriptions and lack anything similar elsewhere in the Empire of Hands suggests it is a long lost art. Perhaps the exquisite seneschal can help. Okay. Let's return to the surface. And let's go to the wild wheel court go to the silent gallery and ask for help translating the vault inscriptions i need 30 wild wheel status oh my god okay i don't have anything for wild wheel status today oh my god let's let's do this a visitor in court and find if anything interesting. Uh, disorder in the court. What is the guilty party accused of? It hardly matters. He and the judge are in a screaming match that has the whole court pounding every surface in a drum beat of approval. As you watch, the judge throws not the book at him but the gavel and his chair, then leaps down with a screech and starts tearing at him with his teeth while the monkeys whoop with fevered excitement. By the end of the fight, everybody seems to have lost interest 
in what the case was about in the first place, and the judge and the defendant are last seen hobbling off together. They leave behind a destroyed courtroom and a thoroughly contented crowd. By game 5, while we'll status though, that should be enough for the Senate show. Okay, ask for help translating the vault inscriptions. The exquisite Senechal often finds herself looking to the past for assistance. She may have an idea. Uh huh. A chip of the past. The exquisite Senechal looks around cautiously and bids you to follow her into a small room behind the Emperor's throne. She fishes for a small wooden box and from it produces what looks like a shard of salt. The glimmer of red honey inside. The memory of an architect long dead. They were scribes also. This is not like the honey you may know. It is frozen, saved. Let it melt into your tongue. Should anybody see you, it will be said you stole it, she glares, from the emperor. Okay. I'll just put it into my mouth. Okay, let's go back to the Fountainhead Isle. Splash, splash, splash. And to the vault of the first emperor. Enter the vault. Mm -hmm. A slightly wandering return. The maze is easily enough traversed with the help of the delightful adventurer's string and her trick. Okay. Um, here. Attempt to read the inscriptions. Yep. The exquisite essentials say that this frozen drop of red honey might help. You place the chip under your tongue. It is not the usual rush of red honey, but a slow, fizzling sense as it spreads through your mouth. For a moment, you have the sense of your body being too big, your blood pumping wrong. Memories hang at the edge of consciousness, unclear, faded. As you look at the inscriptions though, chaos melts into meaning. Uh-huh. Continue to read the inscriptions. The ancient carvings shift between complete nonsense and easy readability as the memories wax and wane. A slightly dubious retelling of history. A terrible light cast from afar. A sliver of cosmogon in the darkness. Burning cinders ashore the sea of dead. The apes who are not yet of the pentacles fear them, but their covetous natures will not be denied. Those who hold them burn harder, yet are cursed with tortured ambition no blood spilling can sate. It is an addictive melancholy. This is the Ecterine Age. Uncounted times hence, he who will be the first emperor is not yet the first emperor. It is he who is first blessed to conquer the blue-clad emissaries from the waters of the dead and drink deep of their stolen life breath by Cinderlite, so dawns the Cerulean Age. The Pentacles reach and sorcels the world, shore to shore, and all who are not ape are cast to the dark. The life breaths of emissaries from the waters of the dead have birthed the empire eternal in blood and light. All forever bask in the glory of the Amaranth Age. Aha! Uh -huh. And... Let's go ask the delightful adventurers for advice. Go to a camp. Consult with the delightful adventurers. Mm -hmm. Can she think of a way over that mosaic floor? The delightful adventurers ponders it. In my experience, darling, such things are built solely by meddling priest types to try to make potential tomb raiders at least bang a little culture into their heads before they get their hands on the loot. Precious little bloody points otherwise. Just boil up and be done. She bites a nail gently. If only we could read the monkey language, we could work out the correct sequence. Of course, there could be a way to simply bypass the problem entirely. Barnabas, have you any thoughts? The giant clay man does not look up from his duties. Okay, we could pay Barnabas to help with the mosaic floor. 500 echoes. I'm not that rich anymore. 
okay, the that weird dubious retelling of history must be a hint. Okay, let's go back to the fall of the first emperor. We'll figure this out. We'll figure the puzzle out. Okay, read the inscriptions. Okay, wait, wait. Uh, there's a yellow, red, and blue tile. Primary colors. Mm. Sliver of Cosmogon. Uh huh. The Icterine Age. Cerulean is blue. Amaranth is red. Icterine is yellow, right? Yellow, blue, red. Okay. Step on the yellow tile. A cautious step. Death does not, however, seem to follow. Blue. Step on a blue tile. The tile creaks, but you remain unpunctured. And now the red tile. History is conquered, yes! With deep relief, you step off the mosaic tile and make a note of the correct sequence. If your mental map is correct, you are near your destination. Yes! Yes! A pit of venomous snakes! You see them through the door, thousands of them. In a pit crossable only by a thin beam lit by inconsistent neat light through a hole in the roof. It would be no problem for a monkey to cross, but human? Ah, it is the delightful adventurer's turn to go first. To her credit, she does not try to weasel her way out of it. Lantern held between her teeth, an adventurer's rapier bouncing casually on her hips. She steps confidently onto the thin beam and swiftly crosses foot over foot without as much as a glance down. Your turn. Oh no! Across the snake pit! Well, if she can do it, 50% chance. <gasps> I failed! Your foot slips! You tumble into the snake pit, landing up to your shoulders in a sea of some of the most dangerous creatures ever to slither the empire hands. Already, you feel their teeth lunging, the venom pounding through your system, the... No, you feel nothing. Except the weight, the cold, dry skins of hundreds of dead snakes surrounding you. The delightful adventurers peers down. Well, that's what happens when one decides to build oneself a fancy dancy snake pit and neglects to think of a way for the poor darlings to be kept fed, isn't it? Come on then, get up from there. No sense being a big girl's blouse. Okay, there's no live snakes. She does make sense, okay? I'm getting five terror, that's fine. An underground courtyard. Down a flight of steps, the center of the vault. Uh huh. So close and yet so far. This is very obviously the oldest part of the temple, around which all else has grown over time. Ancient tapestries hang from walls decorated with portraits of a single ape, clothed in violet and crowned by the sun. He is the first emperor, the hundred-souled founder of the Empire of Hands. His authority reaches across time. Not much to look at, is it? declares the delightful adventurers. They say they buried the old bugger with all of them, a hundred of the finest souls. A hecatomb, if you will. She laughs for a moment at a joke only she and perhaps three others in the need would appreciate. A mark of respect by the primates, you know, to say no one else could do half as much with them. Her eyes glint. Let's do something about that. What do you want to do? Um... There's two things to do here. The final door, huge, imposing, impassable. Is there a way through it? Or a dusty bowl of glassy red chips? Let's check the door. There is no obvious method. There is no handle, and though there is a gap that a crowbar could fit through, the door seems too thick to get any leverage. Scratch marks around the side suggest that more than a few monkeys have tried. Around it are gaping holes where gemstones were once seated. You press a hand to the door, holding a candle to the cracks. Stone, very thick. Even dynamite is unlikely to make much of a dent without bringing the whole temple down around you. There must be a way to open it though. 
Why would anyone bother building a door that they never expected anyone to be able to get through? Mm -hmm. Let's check the dusty bowl of glassy red chips. It stands on a plinth in the middle of the room, its contents seemingly untouched by the monkeys who have tried getting through the door. You take a chip. A drop of red honey hangs in the middle, bleeding out through cracks in the salt. Red honey contains memories. Why would the chips be here? Consume the red honey chip. Its frozen memories glint in the candlelight. Uh huh. A taste of understanding. The memories are diluted, largely unspecific, but that is not important. What this red honey carries is something far deeper. A connection of souls across centuries. The birth of an empire in, in which even the lowest could be uplifted. And sparks of greatness itself pass on, magnified, never lost with the passing of flesh. This was the dream of the first emperor, one of unity and evolution, transcendence and glory. His memory was placed here that all could see their true destiny, purpose. Instead, it is as if the emperor himself is receiving a glimpse of the empire his dream became. His tears run uncontrollably down your cheeks. Oh, because the chips were untouched by the monkeys. He intended for the monkeys to drink his memory and become transcended, becoming a new, improved civilization. But instead, they degraded. Ah, unfortunate. Okay, let's open the Emperor's tomb. The memory fades, but something remains. Only one who is as worldly wise as the first emperor hoped his people would be can open this door. It seems like such a simple thing now. It is slightly more complicated than simply pushing the door open, but only a little. I yeah, have lost a memory of distant shore, Z story, and a tale of terror, but I gained one secret. The burial chamber. The first emperor's bones lie in state, surrounded by souls in spheres of blue, green, and silver. The delightful adventurers applauds politely. Oh, very, very fine work, she declares, taking a moment to admire the architecture before turning her attention to the souls. Hmm. Now, unless my eyes deceive me, there are not a hundred, not even close. Blasted legends and their exaggeration. This will complicate matters. Oh, well. Barnabas, do be a dear and gather those up. Ah, and as for you, she adds, drawing a rapier that glistens at the end. Kindly remain where you are. Oh, this little... Oh, you little... You treacherous... I can attack the delightful adventurers. This entirely unexpected betrayal will not stand. A blade with a sting. The delightful adventurers tuts. I would not, she warns. There is just a tiny but efficacious little drop of cantigaster venom on the tip. Purchased at considerable expense for just this kind of eventuality. Oh, don't sulk, she adds. When I tell this story, your death will be glorious. Your crew especially will be the most moved on our journey home. All the Neath will know of your great sacrifice. Though I may change your name to something that rolls better off the tongue. Something with a little more pep, I'm sure you understand. Like Maxine Appleton is not pep enough. The Clayman finishes gathering the souls. This could be going better. A delightful scheme, mm hmm? Such simple things, aren't they? Says the delightful adventurers. Goodness only knows what the devils do with them. But opportunity is opportunity, is it not? My friends in the Iron Republic were quite happy to agree safe passage to and from their homeland in exchange for this legacy. They will have to be satisfied, I suppose. Her lips turn up into a smug smile. And next time I beat the accursed Leonora Fortes go to hell, well, I shall be able to recommend the bloody sights. 
Oh, you little winch. A calculated risk. With the bag over her shoulder, she is going to be slower. You just have to avoid that poison sword, or I could do nothing for my plan later. The monkeys build this tome by copying stories. The stories always have a way out. Hmm. Let's try this, a calculated risk. And the loyal claymen, of course. You barely get close before Barnabas' arms close around yours. The delightful adventurers nods appreciatively. Well, that's that then, she says, backing out of the vault. Oh, except for one minor detail, Barnabas, I thank you for your loyalty and fine service. As a final courtesy, please do the honours and ensure our friend here remains buried. It is a fine resting place, hmm? Such a shame it will be wasted on just one ape. The clay man lurches towards her as she produces one of your confiscated sticks of dynamite, lights it and drops it in the corridor. Before either of you get close, it explodes in a cloud of dirt and rubble that seals the exit. Barnabas has no face. He does, however, most definitely have expressions. The one he wears now is chilling. You even betray your loyal clayman? Burying him here with me? I will attempt to dig a way out. She won't get away with this. A helping hand. Barnabas immediately joins you in the excavation. Were he a regular clayman, he would likely be obeying his last order right now and ending your life for his mistress. Being unfinished, however, he is no mere golem. In her arrogance, the delightful adventurer appears to have forgotten that loyalty is a two-way street. Indeed. Even with both of you digging through, it will take far too long to clear the rubble. If the delightful adventurer gets back to your ship with the legacy, she will no doubt persuade the crew to leave without you. Oh, you wench! You wench! It has three options I could search for a way out with a flare, or a monkey foundling to the rescue, or a fading taste of red honey. I did take one flare, even though this would be nice too. Okay, let's do the, found the monkey foundling one. If any of your crew was going to save you, she slides down a rope into the vault. Captain, she salutes, hanging upside down by your face and grinning. The Empire of Hands used to be her playground, and she couldn't resist a last spin around some old haunts. When she heard the dynamite go off in the spooky old temple of the boring dead monkey, somehow she knew she'd find you close by. Helping, grins the monkey foundling, letting you climb her rope to safety. Barnabas remains behind, too heavy. He continues to dig his way out, rock by rock. Oh no, Barnabas! Maybe I should have tried one of the other things to get Barnabas out too. A delightful reunion. It appears the delightful adventurer is having problems of her own by the robots. A double betrayal. Whatever the once flea-ridden mayor of Port Stanton took from the delightful adventurer's soul, it evidently came with her loose grip on ethics. He suspected she would try to sneak away without giving him his cut. He was not wrong. Unfortunately for her, he has a small squad of monkeys at his disposal. Unfortunately for him, she has both her rapier and one last stick of dynamite for mutually assured unpleasantness. Well, says the delightful adventurers, seeing you approach, this is an irritating stalemate. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to team up with you, wench. I'm going to team up with the mayor. Even if you defeat him, there could be an army of his kind between you and your ship. That's right. And I don't want to damage my reputation with the monkeys. The delightful adventurer snarls. Species traitor, she spits, lowering the rapier. Even she acknowledges that now she is outmatched. But then it comes a rumbling sound from the jungle. She glances over her shoulder and back with a sudden look of endless smugness as Barnabas slowly trudges towards her from the vault. Splendid, she declares. Barnabas, 
do please deal with this smelly animal and also the monkey. Triumph of the Delightful Adventurers. Barnabas' clay muscles seem to swell as he lumbers forward, silent but purposeful. Are you sure he's coming after us? An unfinished man of clay. Clay men are obedient. Clay men are loyal. Clay men are reliable. Unfinished clay men can be all of these things too. They can, however, be them by choice rather than nature. They can also hold grudges extremely well. The delightful adventuress shrieks in fury as Barnabas effortlessly picks her up, dangling her upside down by one leg. The obscenities are muffled by her skirts falling over her mouth, but the gist is quite clear. Well then, says the mayor, carefully eyeing up the clay giant's spare arm. Should we talk deals now, perhaps? Okay. Hmm. Could split the legacy three ways. Or donate the legacy to the Zeppelin. This will completely fulfill its requirement for the souls. The mayor keeps the remainder to do as he chooses. Receive the payment from the Wild Wheel Court. Oh. But what if I split the legacy three ways? But this will fulfill 100 souls. I think they did mention that uh, her quest here would be an easier way to fulfill the soul requirement for the Zeppelin than delivering 100 souls to the Empire Hands. So we're going to do this, donate the legacy to the Zeppelin. The mayor agrees, of course he does. The boost to his courtly profile will be tremendous. The deal is struck. Also, we will take that one, adds the mayor, pointing at the delightful adventurers. Trying to sneak away our emperor's legacy, Tusk. Oh, do not worry. The punishment is not severe. We approve of the avarice. Still, he grins. We will teach her a little lesson, yes, then banish in shame. A gift to you from the empire. Oh. Okay, now, yes, all the soul quality is now 100. I've gained 10 while we'll court status. Yes. Okay. I could punish the delightful adventurers. She deserves it and she's not getting a ride home. Or can let Barnabas or I can let Barnabas decide her fate. He's after all the one that she betrayed the most. Hmm. Yeah. Punish the delightful adventurers. Barnabas dips his head in the farewell. He follows the monkeys into the woods towards their boat, still carrying a trashing, delightful adventurous. He will not allow her to come to any real harm, but appears to concur that a little humility may be in order. But that is their business, yours now lies elsewhere. Yes. Okay, what can I do in the Wild Wheel Court now that I fulfill the souls? Uh, let's go to the silent gallery here. Oh, but this is for the supplies one. Hmm. Okay. A plan. Supplies for the Zeppelin. The exquisite essential may have an unpalatable way of gathering supplies, but only for a trusted friend. Aha. Uh -huh. A final meal. The cannibal pirates of Heartsick Island have long been a thorn in the Empire's paw. With a few little drops of these vials, you could deal with them for good. Their supplies would be very welcome for the voyage. Oh! You want me to poison them? Aha! Uh -huh. Okay. Wait, what's this? The delightful adventuress. She stands fuming, her head and hands locked tight in a pillory near the center of the palace. She glares as you approach. Do not even think about it, darling, she spits. When I return to London, there shall be a reckoning. My friends in the Emiralty will not stand for this. Mark my... Oh, look, a monkey selling rotten vegetables. Mm -hmm. Uh... The not-so-delightful adventurous. Barnabas stoically stands by his seating mistress, ensuring the monkeys do not take their fun too far. His bruised loyalty does not, however, stretch to interfering 
with the opportunistic monkey selling ammunition. Uh -huh. I could buy a tomato, heavy and squishy, in just the right stages of rot. Juices drip down your hand as you squeeze its soft skin. Yes. I feel <laughs> a complete miss. A rotten tomato flies wild, spattering against the wall. The monkeys howl in disappointment. The delightful adventurer's lips curl in a sneer of contempt. I'm, I'm lost. I'm, <laughs> I'm lost while with status. Ah. I'm going to do it again. Yes. I failed again. No. I will try until I hit. Yes, a direct hit. The rotten tomato splatters into the delightful adventurer's face, dripping from her hair and chin as she splutters in coherent rage. The monkeys cheer wildly. Yes! Okay, what else can I do with her? Uh, we'll decline this time. There is revenge for monkeys. You are better than that. Or more fiscally responsible, at least. Mm -hmm. Three tries is enough. You leave the delightful adventurers to her fate. It is doubtful that she will be here for long. Theft is not a huge crime to the monkeys, particularly when they got their share anyway. They will most likely free her as soon as her outrage ceases amusing them. Of course, this far east, she will be waiting a long time for another ship to take her back to Fallen London. Okay. Okay, that's it. Um, What did the... Exclusive Sunshine wants me to do again. Oh, the take the poison to Heartsick Village. Oh wait. Oh, how do I use this? Do I need an unaccountably package? Okay, what if I use the lost treasure hunter? Oh, do I really need unaccountably package for that. Let's try this. We have a few Syrian enemas anyway. Persuade him to give you his map. Mm -hmm. It could be a profitable kindness. A secret reveal. You bury the treasure and with a few careful calls and prods, push the lost treasure hunter towards it. He falls to ground, digging furiously until he unearths his prize. Bright, shining. His gaze pulls into its revelatory core, but soon his excitement fades, having found what he thought he wanted. His obsession is over and the reward merely a bauble. As diminished by being dragged from desire to reality as the face of an angel in mere paint. Sadder still is that once you persuade him to give you the map, it takes but a moment to realize his mistake. It's a fountainhead. The fool had it upside down. Too late. I have it. Okay, let's... Okay, what about you? The lost treasure hunter. He is holding on to what remains of his supplies now. For his next adventure. Uh-huh. He looks up, eyes gleaming. I have it, he declares. The fountain of youth. That's what the treasure was telling me. See how it glows? It's a map. I just need a ship and a crew and... You back away, leaving him to it. Mm-hmm. You mean you see that from the Syrian Enigma? Okay. Oh, do I really need to be to have this? Unaccountably peckish. I guess I have to make my way to the Chapel of Lights for this. Oh, well. So much for trying to not become a cannibal. Okay, let's uh, go to the Fountainhead Island. Okay, a treasure hunt. Oh. Oh, but I need something awaits you. Oh, I guess I could do this next time. I could do it next time. Return to the boat. I think that's all we could do here for now.